Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I want to do is show you how we can distinguish what types of stationary points we've got. Now I know it's pretty obvious if we've got a graph here, okay, that this particular stationary point and this one are maximum stationary points and these two are minimum stationary points and these two are points of inflection. But that's not the point. When you work out dy by dx and equate it to zero and then solve it to get the x coordinates of these stationary points, you haven't got the graph necessarily in front of you. So if we take away the graph, how do you work out whether you've got maximums, minimums or points of inflection? Okay, well, to answer that question, let's just say we have a graph then of the form y equals f of x. Suppose you've differentiated it and dy by dx turns out to be, say, 9 minus x squared. Where are the stationary points on this? Well, we'd put 9 minus x squared equal to 0 and we'd see that x equals 3, say. 9 minus 3 squared gives us 0. So, x equals 3 gives us a stationary point. We'd put that value of x, 3 in this case, back through our equation and figure out what the corresponding y-coordinate was. Let's say it's 6, just for the purposes of this example. So we've got a stationary point then, say, at the point 3, comma 6. At this point, the gradient of the tangent is 0, parallel to the x-axis. Now, what happens at this stationary point? Have we got a curve that comes up through here and back down again, a maximum? Or is it a minimum, maybe? Or a point of inflection? Well, to answer that question, what we do is we've got the x-coordinate of stationary point directly below here. It's 3. We take a point fairly close to 3 to the left of it, say 2. We take a point to the right of 3, say 4. And what we do then is we draw up a table. Something like this x on the top, dy by dx in the next row. And you put your stationary point, the x-coordinate, in the middle here. So we've got x is 3 here. We know that when you put x is 3 into your equation for dy by dx, you get 0. And that means you've got a tangent which is parallel to the x-axis, horizontal. Now we take our value of x being 2. Put x is 2 into the equation for dy by dx, and you've got 9 take away 2 squared. 9 take away 4, which we know is 5. So dy by dx is 5. And 5 is a positive number, greater than 0. Now, if the gradient is positive, it means that it's coming up. Okay. Now, take a point to the right of x equals 3, say 4, we take that point, just mark it in on your table, x is 4, work out what dy by dx is when x is 4, so it would have 9 take away 4 squared, 9 take away 16, which is minus 7. dy by dx is a negative number, less than 0. What does that mean? We've got a negative gradient. Negative gradient means it's going downwards. So what we've got is a curve then that comes up, flattens off, and then drops down again. So if we were to draw that in here, we've got our curve coming up through here, flattens off, and drops away again. So we've got a maximum turning point, a maximum stationary point. So we write that in as a maximum. And you can see that from the table. All right? So, let's try another example. Again, we've got another curve, y equals f of x, and this time, let's say you differentiate it, comes to x minus 4. Where have you got any stationary points? Well, when dy by dx equals 0, and that would be when x is 4. So, we have a stationary point when x is 4. You plug 4 back into your equation, get what y is, let's say it's 4, 2, say. So we'll mark that point in there 
is 42. We've got a horizontal tangent there at that stationary point. What we need to do is take a point to the left of 4, let's say 3, a point to the right of 4, let's say 5, draw up a table, there's our table similar to last time, put your stationary point in the middle, x is 4, we know that when you put 4 through dy by dx you get 0 which is a horizontal line. So got a horizontal line there. Put your value of x in as 3. What do you get? 3 take away 4 minus 1. So we'll put that in as minus 1. A negative value. So that means that the gradient is decreasing. Put in our x value of 5. What do you get? 5 take away 4, 1. OK, so positive number. Gradient is increasing, so it's going upwards. So clearly at this point here, the stationary point, we've got a curve doing this. If we draw it on here, it's going to look something like this. And what do we call that type of stationary point? Well, it's a minimum. So we have a minimum. So hopefully you're getting the right, uh, an idea of what is going on. Well, rather than delay this too long, okay, what I've got here, another curve, y equals f of x, same kind of thing, differentiate it, you get x minus 5 all squared, say. You've got a stationary point when dy dx equals 0, when x is 5. So if you marked in x is 5, took points to the left and right of it, did exactly what we've been doing so far, you can check this out, you'd find that your dy by dx would come out as plus either side of the point 5. You've got gradients like this, which leads to a curve like this, a point of inflection. So just write that one down. And also, Another example, again, you've got y equals f of x, you've got this is dy by dx, say, eh? you can see that when x is 3, dy dx comes out to be 0, so you could mark 3 in as your stationary point, and then work out points either side of it, and taking 2 and 4 either side, Check it out for yourself, you'll find that dy dx comes out as negative, in both cases negative 1, means that the gradient is decreasing about that stationary point, leading to a curve like this. Again, another point of inflection. So, you should be able to use this particular method then, to be able to distinguish the nature of your stationary points. And this method is often referred to as the first differential method. There is another method out there called the second differential method, and I handle that in another tutorial. Well, okay, I hope that uh, gives you something anyway to work on. And that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.